What is up, our uh, Will Feel number one fans and viewers? This is Scott Casey Gale, Will Feel number one, for for a, for yet another review of Twenty Four Legacy Season One, Episode Five, entitled um, Four O'clock PM to Five O'clock PM. It was a really, really great. I thought it was a decent episode at best. I didn't think it was as good as the other four, but it was pretty decent. Okay, let's begin. Begin, shall we? The action begins with with Nola finally being vindicated. Vindicated, Kitty. When Rebecca notifies her that she was set up, Nola rightfully gets. Gets a, gets a little sassy. She might be free now, but she also realizes that her reputation will never be the same. While it's not much consolation, Rebecca does tell her that John never lost his faith. Yeah, that definitely isn't going to make her feel any better. CTU is in panic mode, trying to track down Carter. As Rebecca lies to Mullen's face, saying she didn't help Carter, she gets a call from the fugitive. He may be on the one, but Carter takes control, telling Mullen to have, to have a team ready to track his location. Before the conversation is over, Mullen does his best to convince Carter that he can't listen to Ben. Ben disagrees. He's wrong about me, Ben argues. You can trust me. Not a great track record so far, Benny. Back at the terrorist headquarters, Jadala has gotten word that the corrupted flash drive did contain one of the sleeper cells. Kasuma thinks that they should st still strike, while Jadana wants to wait for 15 cells. The clearing that's how we bring in this, this country to its knees. That's a perfect fixago to, to what should be one of the, the, those sleeper cells. As, as Ka Kasan and Amawa head home after taking care of Drew, the older brother tries to cheer up his sister. The, we are changing the world, he says. Though she looks pretty unconvinced, waiting for them at home is quite a surprise. A visit from Papa, as John could, could attest, that's never a good thing. Amora is happy to see her father, the Kassan, who is convinced that she's that, that this dropping is, is no accident less, is less so. Having just escaped death, Isaac is on a war path. He thinks more people were, were on Jerome and, and Aisha's plan to betray him. And he wants everything, everyone's cell phones. Nicole is nervous popping a call to Carter and hopes that her husband will come to get her. The best, the best he can do is tell her to go to Christine's man. For the people witness, in, in witness protection, they have a lot in the nearby options. Nicole is confused. Well, she thought this was all over. Spoiler alert, Nicole, it's never over in episode 5. Once she, once she hangs up, one of Isaac's guys comes in and begging her to talk some sense into him. If you want, if you want, it was you leaving, leaving that broken. He tells her, he tells her, lay, laying on some super girl. Papa Terrorist is enjoying some of Amara's cooking. When he asks his, his son how work is going, trick question, he knows that Kassan has been at the construction since I and Wiggs, and there are rumors that Kassan was involved with his friend's scheme to plant a bomb aboard. Papa T slaps his son, demanding answers. When his children are silent, he says they're coming home with him, a plan that, that, that Kassan isn't on board with. The men, Tusso and the younger and more in and Chef Kassan scores the expected victory. Despite their father's pleas, a conflicted Amora helps the brother tie him up. There might be some tail was, was on the loose, but Ben needs Carter to stop for some shaping tools because apparently Gabriel isn't a bad, a bad guy. guy as he gives himself a trim. He, he contemplates the afterlife. You, you think you get to see them, them when you die. Ben asks his friend, the people you'd have, oh yeah, we should have, we should have known he was a goner. Next, Ben finishes, Ben finishes shaving.
Time for the week's segment of, of Marlins hate, Hates Andy. The analyst has come to Marlins office where he learns that he's being benched. But why? Well, it definitely has something to do with illegal help, illegally helping Carter to get those sh- schematics. Not to worry, though, unemployed Rebecca, who seems to still be wanting CT promises she will get his job back. Thankfully, Nickley, the wide to see Gabriel just ending up time for Ben to get edged up real nice. Before they go in, Carter asks his friend if there's anything he needs to know. Ben ignores the question, so surely that's a great sign. Upon walking into the scary-looking warehouse, the duo is confronted by armed men. You got some bombs coming here, says, says, says an intimidating man. Well, that's sign number two, that Ben hasn't been, been shared the whole story. But Carter pulls out a glimpse of, of schematics, leading the man... Leading, leading the man to bring them to Gabriel. After being gu- gu- guilted into it, Nicole goes to see Isaac, who is still, who is still off his walker. This is what, is, what, the, what being a drug, drug kingpin will do to you kids. If you keep going, if you keep go- going like this, they're going to churn on you, she, ple- she pleads. Uh-oh, that's not what you should say to an already paranoid person. He freaks out asking who she has been talking to and ends up accidentally knocking her over. That's the last straw. She's headed to Christine's. Isaac tries to convince her to stay. Playing the role of your typical abuser try, by trying to justify his actions. I'm losing my mind here, he admits. Now he's laying guilt on, on her too. Confirming that there hasn't been, that, that hasn't been the same since she left. Everyone seems to be reminiscing about the past. Must have been pretty dope, dope time to back, back before she left. She agrees to stay as they get a little too close for my, for my and for family Carter's comfort. As Ben and Carter kneel down, Gabriel makes his dramatic entrance, looking pretty damn terrifying, but demonstrating great manners. I'm delighted you decided to drop by. He opens. Ben says... He's here to make things right. Yep, Ben definitely did something bad. It turns out that Gabriel fronted Ben $50,000 for an arms deal, but the former ranger supposedly got whopped right into your veins, interjects Gabriel, saying what we are all thinking in the classic 24 test. Gabriel gives Carter a gun. Kill him, he orders. Then we can talk. Ben doesn't even resist me, and we look to be headed for one of those times when the lead character must take a must make a heartbreaking decision to save the world. We are, but Carter fails or, or actually passes by refusing to do it. Carter earns Gabriel's respect for his loyalty, yet, yet that he doesn't save Ben. As one of Gabriel's men shoots Ben, shoots the troubled veteran in the head. The, the, the time has come to question Papa Donovan. Yet again, Rebecca gets to do the honors even though she doesn't work there and it's her father-in-law. As John looks on, his father follows Lucy's instructions from last week and plays dumb. This doesn't sit well with John, who rushes in. You have a chance to make this right, he screams. Tell her the truth. But what if she can't handle the truth? Amira is starting to reconsider the whole terrorist thing after a one-on-one with her father. But it's too late because because Kassan, Kassan has just gotten the, the activation code. Why now? Well, it turns out that that Kusuma isn't good at listening. We went uh, and we and he went against Jadala's orders. At least this way, way we strike a blow. He shares Jadala puts a gun to the man's head. Kusuma can can finally believes that the that the student Chun terrorist doesn't have it in him. Bad news for Kusuma. Jadala has gone cold blooded. The shooting his white hand man in the head. Gabriel has checked out Carter's credentials and is satisfied. Upon taking a look at the schematics, he asks Carter what's to stop him from keeping them and just killing him. Someone who, who I trust told me you were a stand-up guy. He replies referring to his friend who literally just got shot by Gabriel's people. Once Gabriel verifies buys the schematics, Carter makes his move, grabbing a gun count for backup to move in. A shootout begins at C- as CTU arrives, with Carter having to put a bullet in Gabriel's knees. 
Locke's entrance distracts Carter, leading Gabriel to slash his own throat, and at, and in the moment Gabriel's computer is touched, it starts to wipe itself clean. Carter rushes to the to put the dead man's man's thumbprint on the device, hopefully salvaging one of the evidence. And I would give this episode um four and a half stars. I mean, it could have been better, but next week's episode really looks good. But I'm still impressed with Twenty Four Legacy. I still really really like, it. and I wonder what's gonna happen next week's week week's episode. Anyway. Anyways, anyway, comment down below in the comments section. Tell me what you thought of it. And you know who to subscribe to.